100 marauders are about to attempt the heist of a lifetime. On the mainland, there are 100 wealthy merchants. So wealthy, even their horses are wearing Supreme. The marauders have come here to steal everything, and in this video, we'll see how it all unfolds. And hey, only 33% of my audience actually watches the full video. Try watching until the end, and I promise you won't regret it. In our last event, we met a player named Tech Wizard, who had found an artifact of the gods. Once his quest for the artifact was complete, he set sail all the way south to a place known as the Cliffs of Mir. He even took along another player we had met in that video named Mint. The two players arrive at the Cliffs of Mir to find all of our merchants gathered around their leaders. My fellow merchants, please listen closely. We've received reports of marauders in the area and I have no doubt they're here to steal our riz, our hose, and our product, which, by the way, do not eat the product. I saw some of you doing that earlier. I trust that you guys are intelligent enough and competent enough to follow instructions, so please form four lines. The merchants, as cunning as ever, decide to form a blob. On one side of this blob is a group of players who insist they're going to create a church, even though there's a church right there. Bruh. We made sure that these people have more than, like, one collective brain cell, right? So Legacy gives up trying to sort his people and hopes for the best. The merchants head off in every which way. Some of them start running through buildings for loot and others wander off, never to be seen again. Tech Wizard solicits the help of a few townspeople to escort him back to his mansion. He doesn't actually live in the Cliffs of Mir, and since there are reports of marauders, he doesn't want to risk making the journey alone. The group heads off towards his home on the coast. Not all of the merchants started off at the cliffs. A handful of them spawned over at Pearl Point. Here, they were under the leadership of 233 Neon, who briefed his people about the marauder sightings. He instructed them to form two groups, one to collect resources, and another to guard the town. I had really hoped this group was more organized than the others, but they definitely were not. The merchants who were tasked at guarding the town decide to run off and explore the wilderness instead, leaving the town completely exposed. Just west of Pearl Point, the Marauders have been setting up camp on an island, and today, they begin the first stage of their heist against the merchants. Today is the day we get off this godforsaken island. We're going to separate into a few groups. I need some of you to scout the mainland for our new base, and I need the rest to go deeper into enemy territory to find the resources. The merchants cannot know we are coming. Good luck everyone, and I'll see you on the mainland. Wait, are these players actually listening to their leaders? What a beautiful sight! The scouts are sticking together and handle this shark attack like it's nothing. They are doing such an amazing job at listening to orders. Wait. Never mind. The one advantage that the Marauders had is that the merchants didn't know where they were going to come from. But it appears this group of scouts decided to run straight into Pearl Point and attack the town. Perfect. Well played, Marauders. All the merchants fled for their lives or were killed on sight. Another group of scouts had come across a large mansion. The Marauders scouts carefully approached the mansion, making sure to be as stealthy as... So they bust in, taking the mansion by force. But... Nobody was home, so they claim it as their new base. Not five minutes later, a familiar face shows up outside. It was Tech Wizard with a flower in hand. I'm a neutral party. I have no I have no role to play in the conflict between marauders and merchants. Do you have any weapons? I think he's a psychopath character. Drop that weapon. Drop both of those weapons, I'm, actually. This that is literally my house. Okay, there's too many of you coming. Right. Hold on, I want to talk to you no, in no. private. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. We, we, we want to talk. Go we want to talk. But then the marauders spot Tech Wizard's escorts and begin chasing the merchants away. Tech Wizard stays behind and speaks with the Marauder leader named Oni. Oni, what business uh, do you have in these parts? That's our mean? base now. We what? need to use it. You're not even we in the right use... part of the map. You're so far from everything. I know where a uh, better base is for you guys. Uh, How about we return we it after we kill take... all the merchants, but you gotta help us out with that. I can provide information. I just need and... access to my home. Yeah, we, we, uh, we will grab yeah, it and we, we will make sure okay. that your okay, house good. will stay on your on its place okay, and uh, nothing gets destroyed. Now two parties are claiming this mansion is theirs. The actual homeowner and an armed gang of marauders. But Tech has a trick up his sleeve. What the marauders don't know is there's a hidden dungeon inside the basement of his mansion which is protected by magic. This means that only wizards may enter the dungeon. If Tech Wizard can somehow find a way to get to his dungeon safely, maybe he can use something in there to help fight off the marauders inside. But as Tech Wizard descends the staircase, 
he sees two marauders already inside of his dungeon. Is someone in my house claiming to be a wizard? Are you kidding me? Tech speaks with Welcomin, who says that he too is a wizard, and he's taken on an apprentice named Conlud. It appears that the marauder wizards have stolen Tech's artifacts, including his enchanting table and potion stands, which means the marauders now have a huge advantage. Tech Wizard is forced to change his strategy and work with the marauders so that maybe later he can take back his mansion. Back at the cliffs, Legacy and Bill instruct their team to create a giant tower made of crafting tables. I'm pretty sure they were calling it Big Bertha, which suits how terribly ugly it is. At this point, Tech Wizard's escorts arrive home safely and inform Legacy of the Marauder activity at the mansion. A few minutes later, a group of players burst into town and announce the fate of Pearl Point. It has been Pearl wiped off the gone. map and burned to the ground. But that wasn't exactly true. 233 Neon and his fellow Pearl Point merchants carefully return back to the town and finds Pearl Point has been left nearly abandoned by the Marauder group that originally attacked. There were only a few Marauders left behind, which the merchants quickly chase away and secure themselves a few prisoners. Neon decides it's best to join up with the other merchants at the Cliffs of Mir. So the group rounds up their prisoners and makes their way on the road. Sounds like a smart plan, right? Taking prisoners along a main road during a marauder attack. Guess what happens not two minutes later? They walk straight into 20 marauders. Oh my god, run, run, everybody run. After safely escaping, the group finds a handful of merchants beginning to create a church in the wilderness. I'm still confused as to why this is happening, but all the power to them. Neon's group continues their retreat back to the cliffs. At this point, every single marauder had made their way toward the mansion, and Tech Wizard was not happy. One group of marauders managed to capture a few merchant prisoners on the road. They bring one prisoner forward who is requested to speak with a leader. It was Mince, Tech Wizard's traveling companion from the north. I have to kill Legacy. Mince explains his mission to assassinate the merchant leader, and he says that Harry is an accomplice. So, Oni agrees not to harm the two of them. The Marauders allow Tech Wizard, Mince, and Harry to sail back to the Cliffs of Mir so they can blend in with the merchants and eventually sabotage them. Tech Wizard doesn't actually want this outcome, but he still has to act friendly with the Marauders so he can reclaim his mansion. Oni then meets with the two Marauder Wizards. They discuss plans to begin enchanting gear for their best PvP players and brewing potions to spread among their team. This cooperation with the Marauders puts them at a huge advantage. The mansion continues to expand, creating support systems for all 100 marauders, and a few bonus areas for the more disheveled members. Yep, that's a meth attic. Now, if you've seen my previous event, you'll know there aren't just two groups of players across this map. I've scattered multiple groups of farmers, and each farm sells different commodities to the players. Due to the marauder threat, Horses were selling like mad, and these two farmers were getting filthy rich. But Mega Hemlock and Sir Chuan weren't planning on cashing out just yet. These two were proper entrepreneurs, and they dreamed of an empire. So they began using their wealth to hire workers so they could expand their operations. Two other farmers decided they were being oppressed by the oligarchy and decide they're going to join forces with the other farms to create a monopoly. Mega Hemlock agrees to the deal and the Farmers' Federation is born. They begin building walls around their headquarters and establish a safe community. While they build, more members keep showing up, including this merchant. Yo, oh, I know this yo. guy. Bro, I got mugged. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> Marauders, but no. they- Wait, come, come, come had... closer so we don't get ambushed. Apparently when Dinosaur Digger was mugged, the Marauders interrogated him for secret information on the merchants. Dino feared that the merchants would execute him for revealing their plans. So he joins the Farmers' Federation for safety. The Federation continues to build up their defenses. Another group of players took on the role of being pirates. They used the Marauder invasion as a way to sneak onto the mainland and cause as much trouble as they could. Long John and Captain Sam were exploring a farm when suddenly Captain Sam makes an astounding discovery. <laughs> Look what I found. You found a netherite hoe? <laughs> it was hidden in a barrel in the wall. A player named Abraham, the leader of the church, approaches these two pirates in an effort to recruit them into his religion. That is a very nice hoe you have. What Father Abraham doesn't know is that Long John had a terrible experience with a priest when he was a child. Long John snaps. 
May the Lord bless me! Killing the father in cold blood, the pirates continue their journey, causing trouble with whoever they come across. Obsessed with loot, they kill both merchants and marauders. A little while later, the pirates came face to face with Mega Hemlock and Sir Chuan, leaders of the Farmer's Federation. The pirates recognize that after killing so many people, they need allies to help them stay alive. So they make a mutual protection deal with the Federation. The group heads back to their HQ, and to officiate their friendship, the pirates trade their prized netherite hoe for two saddles and two leaves. Netherite ho! Netherite ho! Netherite ho! Netherite ho! Neon, the leader of Pearl Point, arrives safely to the Cliffs of Mir. They are coming here. The marauders are coming. They have larger numbers. They have good armor. They have horses. We have to outnumber them or something. We have to make traps. Uh, we need to get everyone geared. Just in general, there's too many of us who don't have armor. Neon briefs legacy on what's happened at Pearl Point and how they were ambushed on the trail by a large group of marauders with enchanted gear and diamond weapons. A merchant named Abdul confirms these findings after one of his previous scouting missions. Abdul proposes they form a militia to counterattack the marauders and drive them further away from the merchant's main base. Legacy approves Abdul's request and they begin forming a squad. A few minutes later, Tech Wizard arrives at the cliffs and reports to Legacy that Pearl Point is currently empty and that the marauders are all at his mansion. So they begin debating whether they should move everyone over to Pearl Point. In my opinion, these guys have big enough walls to hold off an attack, but hey, I'm not playing, so my opinions don't count, I guess. Abdul's militia arrives at Gerard Farm and successfully drives the marauders back to the mansion. But as soon as the militia returns to the cliffs, a marauder scouting party arrives just outside the wall. Marauders, marauders, marauders outside the front gate, guys. They've opened fire, they've opened fire. The merchants defend their territory and drive the scouts away. But to the leaders, this is a very bad sign. They're scouting now. If we gotta leave, we leave now. Yeah, we, we leave now. Another chance. Legacy and Bill fear these scouts will soon bring back the entire Marauder team. They know where we are. If we're gonna leave and survive, the time is now. Altogether, the merchants march west to Pearl Point. By now, the church had built up a proper foundation to their temple, and when they learned of Father Abraham's death, they began to pray for his ascension into heaven. Suddenly, a god appears. Right, so it was actually just our admins who convinced these players to worship them for no particular reason. The admins gave the church a book with a few commandments inside, one of which I 100% agree with. Please speak with your lawyer before using the get out of hell free card. The members dedicate their building to the previous pastor and officially name themselves the Church of Abraham. Since they no longer had a leader, Corgi Farmer decides to bring up a vote and he nominates Drew Blue as a candidate for their new pastor. The members unanimously vote in favor of Drew and promote him to Father Drew. The gods are pleased and they deliver a gift, the Disc of Pigstep. After a long journey, the merchants arrive at Pearl Point. I'm lying to you, it was probably like five minutes of walking, but alas, they were here and they began to set up their new base. Over at the Farmer's Federation, Mega Hemlock was flexing his wealth by showing off his brand new piano. You see you see this this thing, bro? You know what it's supposed to be, what it actually is? It's true purpose. You're a pirate, bro. You're a pirate. Oh, is you he playing the piano? Bro. Let me just show you, bro. <laughs> Thank you. 
get ratio bozos. Oh, I'm dead. GG. The Marauders claim an immense victory after ambushing the merchants at Pearl Point. As it turns out, the Marauders never intentionally created the ambush. They were headed there, also thinking it was abandoned. Nevertheless, they claim Pearl Point and begin fortifying in case of a merchant counterattack. That day, celebration activities were in order. The Marauders played games in the center of town, including the Marauder Olympics and Duck Duck Goose. The original Meth Attic business also began to franchise. Two separate locations were opened in town and started competing for each other's customers by making wild claims about their product. What are the consequences of taking meth? Uh, uh none. The next morning, Bill, a merchant leader, returns to Pearl Point to speak with the Marauders. Okay. Mince was the hero from the Yachtlands. He was trying to kill Legacy. I was the one who ordered him to do that. Legacy led the merchants to ruin, and that's why I wanted him gone. You ended up killing him. I am no threat to the Marauders. I can be and, your prisoner. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll take you prisoner. They proceed to take Bill into their town and deliberate his future, eventually choosing to release him in order to continue his efforts to sabotage the merchants. Any surviving merchants made their way back to the Cliffs of Mir. 233 Neon was now in charge, and his number one priority was growing their defenses. He knew a Marauder attack was coming, and they had very little time to prepare. All hands were on deck as the merchants built up their defenses throughout the day. Every player was contributing what they could until their resources ran dry. As night fell, the Marauder leaders gathered their men. You have proven your courage, and today, you fought like true warriors. Tomorrow at dawn, we make the final push to victory, and we bathe in the riches of the spoiled merchants. And at the break of dawn, the Marauders depart Pearl Point and march onto the Cliffs of Mir. But while they do this, the Farmers Federation has a genius ploy. Pearl Point was now empty, and what the Marauders didn't know is that this town was the source of the merchant's wealth. See, in the oceans just outside of Pearl Point, there was a pearl farm for which the town was named after. The Farmers Federation took this opportunity and claimed the town for themselves, fully establishing the Federation as a new superpower in the region. The Marauders march east until the walls of the Cliffs of Mir came into view. You can play in future events if you join my Discord. And hey, thanks for watching the entire video. I want you to leave a comment telling me your favorite moment, and obviously subscribe.